We have now come to the last of the seven Sundays of Lent, and we are just one more week away from Easter. We have been getting ready for Resurrection Sunday for many weeks. In past years, Palm Sunday was a time of great celebration. In 2008, Thea was baptized in Palm Sunday. Aren't the boys small? We ran around the sanctuary and waved palms and celebrated. Last year and this year, it has been different. We, we are still using this time to get ready for Easter. I made traditional Ukrainian Easter eggs called pisanki. I decorated my window. We created a last supper out of toys to celebrate Maundy Thursday, which is this very week. We had communion at our house. Last year, we even stood outside on our front steps and yelled, He is risen! on Easter Sunday. This year, I helped write a devotion for church. But even though we are preparing for the end of Lent, we are also getting ready for it to come back again. Did you know that some churches burn the palm branches from the last Sunday of Lent one year to be used for Ash Wednesday and the start of Lent the next year? We are always moving through the story of God's year. This week is one where we both celebrate and mourn. Let's listen to another version of the Palm Sunday story and pay attention to the happy and the sad moments. God's Story, Palm Sunday. So part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer, but the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples, but before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. 
Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey, like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives. And they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus was traveling. He sent his disciples to get a donkey. People spread coats and branches on the road. They praised Jesus. Some people didn't recognize that he was the king. That made Jesus sad. He had come to rescue them. A few days later, he would show just how much he loves us. And that's a part of God's story. I wonder, did the donkey's owner ever really understand who needed it? I wonder, did the people waving palm branches know they were seeing their savior? I wonder, what would it mean for the stones to cry out? I wonder, what could make Jesus cry? I wonder how you will get ready for Easter this week. It was the time of Passover in Jerusalem and excitement was in the air. It was a time of celebration and remembrance. A time where God's people looked back to how they had been rescued from slavery in Egypt and looked forward with hope to never being slaves again. Amongst the festivities, news of a man called Jesus had reached the city. Some said he was a teacher. Others said he was a troublemaker. Still more said he was a prophet sent by God to help his people. Whoever he was, amazing stories of miracles and healing seemed to follow him wherever he went. And now he was coming to Jerusalem. Maybe this was the time of rescue they'd been waiting for. The streets of Jerusalem were rammed with people, desperate to get a glimpse at this new conqueror. Some began to roll out the red carpet and others laid their cloaks on the ground. <coughs> others grabbed leaves from the trees, ready to wave on cue. <coughs> Songs began to bubble up in the crowd. The people could not contain their excitement. <coughs> and then it happened. Here he was, Jesus. But something was wrong. There was no army. There were no weapons. Oh, man. Jesus wasn't even on a horse, but instead a high roller pink four by four. Oh, no. No, no, sorry, sorry. I meant to say Jesus was on a space rocket. Uh, no, that's not right. Who wrote this script? Oh, okay, I found it. Here it is. Jesus was on a lowly donkey. What kind of king rode a donkey? Many in the crowd were confused. Some were even angry. This was not what they had expected. But little did they know, God's chosen king was now amongst them. The world would never be the same again. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus has come. <laughs> 